So I actually really wanted to be here last year and I didn't make it and I spent the entire year regretting it because I kept hearing about all these wonderful stories and what happened. TEDx started off as a little experiment about just over two years ago. And at the time, we at TED thought that possibly 10, maybe 20 people would show up and host a TEDx event. And we are humbled daily by what this program has grown into. Um, events like this happening all over the world, everything from a shanty town to this type of extraordinary event today, to an event that happened on a floating hotel in the middle of the Amazon rainforest for 600 people. So I'll go back and tell you a little bit of TED's history. It started out as a for-profit conference 25 years ago. Chris Anderson took it over in 2001 and turned it into a non-for-profit conference. And in 2006, we put the TED Talks online for free with the mantra of ideas worth spreading. At the time, in 2008, when Chris and I started talking about the TEDx program, we knew three things. We knew that people were connecting to the TED Talks online in this amazingly personal, powerful, and passionate way. We also knew that a lot of people were connecting um, and watching TED Talks in classrooms and in group settings, and then having conversations around these talks. And then finally, we knew that more and more people were coming up to us and asking us if they could host an official conference in their city or their country. And for the f small TED team, this was a very hard concept to scale. So we open sourced TED and we launched TEDx on a university campus. And just over two years later, here are some of the stats so you can get a sense of the growth. We've had 1,700 events held. We have another 1,000 events planned. We've had over 300 events on university campuses with another over 100 events planned. And this slide can just give you a sense of some of the amazing growth. These are just the events that have happened on university campuses. And so there are the stats and there are definitely the lessons learned and it's been an amazing journey, but I've become frequently obsessed with what, with what I think are the real stories, the stories like you just saw in that video. Not every TEDx event prepares such an amazing story about the connections and the projects coming out of the TEDx events, but really the amazing connections and stories that do happen at these TEDx events, the memes, the themes, the ideologies that are spreading globally around the world, the unique voices that are bubbling up from these TEDx events, voices we may never have heard from had it not been for TEDx. And then also the cross-cultural pollinations. A lot of these TEDx events live stream. So when you have a TEDx event in Taipei that live streams their event into mainland China to all the university campuses, some really interesting things start to happen. And so what I'd like to really do with my remaining few minutes, because I always say it's not my story, but it's the story of all these amazing people putting on these events around the world, is read some of these stories in their own words. The first one I'm going to read comes out of an event called TEDx Shekvati. This happened in a rural village in India, where the organizer had gone this incredible personal journey to allow an event to happen because the elders of the village felt incredibly threatened by a conference by ideas. This was an email I got after her second event a year later. The usual villains are still there, but their voices were much lower compared to last year. The most beautiful outcome was that our venue was a low-cost school, which is around 80 years old. There are no toilets in the school, but because of TEDx, Sheikh Vakti, the school finally got toilets built by the community members. It finally is getting a coat of paint too. And the best part is that one of the local politicians who represent Fatpur has also attended the event and has donated money, which will be used towards building two new classrooms in the school. And then a couple of quotes. This is from TEDx Skopje. As a small, impoverished country, I think Macedonia needs more TEDx. This event bolstered our confidence, our belief in human potential. We need more shining eyes, as Ben Zander put it. And then a TEDx a e a email I received from an organizer of a TEDx event at an Ivy League school that will remain nameless. This came from a student. I just wanted to let you know that I took more from the talks today than I have from any of my classes, maybe ever, <laughs> at name of the school. <laughs> and then my final um, piece comes, it was an email I received recently from one of my favorite TED speakers. He actually curated a session at TED this year. And he said, I'm sitting at the end of the world, the nearest small town over six kilometers away, huge oil fields surrounded by massive dunes, nothing else, with the heads of the world's largest oil company and his hotshot team, and a lot of very smart young kids, co-ed. And what has most impacted young swords in the past few weeks? 
Not Japan or the turmoil next door, but TEDx Rehad and TEDx Jedi. It's what everybody is talking about. It's the lead topic on Facebook and Twitter. And so TEDx is creating this amazing ecosystem of inspiration across the planet. And it's sort of this unique network of voices and ideas and passions. And it really is truly exciting. And so I want to thank Carol and her amazing volunteer team for putting this on today. And I want to thank you for being here to share in this global conversation. Thank you. Thank you.